There's a place in the woods called Aspen Ridge, and we're lucky enough to call this place our home. We're the Popple People. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to take a deep dive look at a new inverter generator that we picked up. We got this AI Power SUA2300i ultra quiet inverter generator for under 400 US dollars from one of the big box warehouse clubs. You know, one of those where you have to purchase an annual membership. Anyhow, this was on sale and it claims to be ultra quiet. So between that and the fact that it's fairly lightweight and a lot more portable than our other bigger generator, we decided to take a gamble with a brand that we've never heard of before and see if this little generator might be good for say hauling back in the woods so the first thing out of the box is this little quick start guide. It also comes with a few other little baggies full of goodies, including the oil that this unit will need. It seems to be pre-measured because it's a smaller than usual container and it's not all the way full. Next, we've got the 12 volt DC battery charging cables, and these come with both a plug-in for a cigarette lighter as well as alligator clips. Then we have a set of parallel cables in case you wanna pick up more than one of these power inverters and hook them together. And finally, it comes with a 30 amp RV adapter. There's also a separate little kit for changing the spark plug as well. And of course, there's another little baggie with the owner's manual and other paperwork in it too. So as Tater's busy here getting it all set up, just a few stats about this unit. It has 1800 running watts and 2300 starting watts. We're hoping this will be sufficient to run the air conditioner in our camper, but we'll see. So to get to where the oil goes in, this little side access panel has to come off first. So a little bit more about this unit. It says it has anywhere between a six and a half to 10 hour runtime on the 1.1 gallon tank of gas. Now it says 6.5 hours in one place and 10 hours in another place. So not really sure which exactly it is. We'll find out. It's a 79 CC OHV four cycle engine and it has a low oil automatic shutdown feature, which is nice. Specs say that it only weighs 51 pounds, which is a fraction of the weight of our other generator, so we're really hoping that this is a lot easier to haul and maneuver. There's also wheels on it, as well as a telescoping handle. Not sure if that'll be super helpful in the woods, but we're going to find out. It also says it's only 52 decibels, so we'll see how quiet it really is. It also came with this funky little funnel. Tater really likes this. It's very handy. Seems like it's exactly the right tool for the job. Looks like we've got a pretty decent digital display here as well. Looks like it shows both power and fuel levels, as well as the output indicator, overload alarm, and that low oil alert as well. The dimensions measured 20 by 12 and a quarter by 19 and a half inches, and there's a three year residential warranty that came with it as well. Now this unit is made in China, so if that's a deal breaker for you, FYI. There were a couple of little safety tags that just needed to be removed, and then time to gas her up, see what happens. So we just used regular old 87 octane gas, nothing fancy or special here. That little side access panel that we had removed initially needed to be put back on. Luckily, it was way easier to put this back on than it was to pull it off to begin with. According to the quick start guide, before you try to start this, make sure everything is unplugged and disconnected from the generator and switch that low idle to off. Then open the fuel cap air vent. And since we're starting this engine for the first time and the engine is cold, the little multi-switch dial on the side is gonna get turned to the choke position. Well, let's see what she can do. It's easy to pull. Once that engine stabilizes, turn the little multi-switch from choke to run.
a tracting handle and the wheels, they're super handy for transport, even though this is a pretty light unit and you could easily carry it just with the little handle on top. We're going to haul this down to our camper though, see what she can do. Give her a test run. It was really handy that this actually came with the RV adapter. We didn't have to go buy something separately. That doesn't sound healthy. So bottom line for the camper, this is able to run the lights, the refrigerator, you can run the water pump, you could charge a cell phone or two, it can turn on the roof fan but not the air conditioning unit, and it'll charge that 12 volt camper battery. So I guess the big question next is, in real life, how loud is it? Are you going to really hear this generator inside the camper, or is it pretty quiet that you can't hear it? So as you can tell from that video, we have the generator sitting near that upper portion of the fifth wheel and you could definitely hear it inside. It's not too loud and the further back you go in the camper, the less you hear it. But when nothing else is running, you definitely can hear the generator inside the camper. One other thing we wanted to potentially use this little portable unit for was running power tools and saws when we we're building back in the woods. So we decided to try it out here and see if it'll run the sliding compound miter saw. She's definitely not a one pull start this morning.
you'd like to get a hold of us with questions or comments, please email us at thepopplepeople, all one word, at gmail.com. Or you can put plop a comment below. We love hearing from you. So if we're looking at just kind of a bottom line on this generator, it was able to run some items in the camper, but not everything. The roof air conditioner was really the big thing we wanted to use it for. It was not able to run that. However, it is a fairly quiet generator and it is very small and transportable, fairly lightweight. It was able to run our saw, but there's a certain procedure you have to follow, so that one's a little bit iffy. It was able to run a microwave and a box fan, as well as a small window unit air conditioner. We might actually have to just put that small window unit into our camper if we want the air conditioning in there and want to use this generator to run that. But overall, we feel like a generator like this is best for things like picnics or taking along on beach days, or perhaps if you go camping. If you just need like a radio playing or a few lights on or charging up cell phones or things like that, I feel like this is where this unit's going to shine. It was very easy to pull start and it does run smooth. But our biggest hang up with this generator is that it just doesn't put out a ton of wattage. We did look for online video reviews for this unit before we bought it and we just didn't find much out there. So if you're considering this unit, hopefully this review will help you make your decision on whether or not this little generator will meet your needs. I guess if we would have watched a review like this before we purchased this generator, we actually probably wouldn't have bought it. We would have just gotten something bigger to begin with. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you'd like to follow our journey, please consider subscribing. That way, you can be a Popple People too. We'll see you soon.